Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1463. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we got to see how to show formula in a cell with the Excel functions formula, text, and is formula. Now here, F2 to put that in edit mode, there's our formula. It's already entered in the cell. And of course, when I enter it, it shows me the result. But off to the side, I want a second Excel formula to actually show me what the formula looks like. Not only that, but as I add new formulas here, I want the formula to automatically show up over here. Now, I'm going to click in cell D4. The logic for our formula is going to be if there's a formula in the cell, then please actually show me the formula. Otherwise, show me nothing. That means in each cell here, I have one of two things. I either am going to show the formula or show nothing. Anytime we have that situation where there's one of two things that go into the cell based on a logical test, then we use the if function. Now, the if function needs a logical test, either true or false. So here's where we're going to use is formula. Now, is formula is one of many logical functions that either delivers a true or a false. Now, I'm going to click in that cell, close parentheses. There's our logical test. In this cell right here, of course, it's going to come out true. Down in these other cells, it'll come out false. Now, comma, the second argument, value if true, that's what I want to put in the cell if that logical test comes out true. And now we're going to use formula text. I simply click on that cell, and formula text will know to show whatever formula shows up in that cell. Now, we need comma, value if false. That's what to put in the cell if this comes out false. That means there is no formula. I'm going to put the syntax for show nothing, double quote, double quote. Now, technically, that's a zero length text string. But for our formula, that instructs the if to show nothing. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Now, as I copy this down, there are our formulas. Now, I'm going to come over here. I'm up here. We could see the formula. I simply did the average on the total sales. But what if I didn't have this helper column here? Well, I could still calculate the average based on units and price by using the sum product function. Sum product, I can take two arrays, multiply them, and then add them. So I'm going to click in the top cell for units, Control Shift down arrow to highlight all the way down, Control Backspace to jump back to the active cell. Now I type a comma. I get my second column, Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace, close parentheses. Now that gives me the overall total after multiplying each one of the individual items. That's the first part of the average. We take the total, and now we divide by the count. Now I'm going to use the count function, which counts numbers. Click in whichever one of these columns, Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace, and then close parentheses. There's a way to calculate average when I have two individual columns. There's the total. There's the count. When I hit Enter, boom. Oh, and look at our formula. That is beautiful. Now, standard deviation, this isn't a statistics class, so we're not going to talk about what standard deviation is. But it is a measure that shows you the variation in our data set. I can use STD, and this is population. That means I have every single number that's possible. Now I'm going to simply click in the top cell, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace, close parentheses, and when I hit Enter, boom, look at that. Equals standard deviation of the population, and I'm going to do something similar. Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace. I want my standard deviation, Control, Shift, Down, or Control, Backspace, to actually not rely on this helper column. Now, this is a special type of formula called an array formula, because I'm doing an operation not on a single cell and another single cell, but a range or array of values. 
Now, number one argument in standarddeviation.p requires that we use the special keystroke to tell Excel that this is an array formula, and that keystroke is Control-Shift-Enter. Immediately, I look up to the formula bars, and I see my curly brackets. That's Excel telling me it understood that this was an array formula. But guess what? I don't even have to look up in the formula bar because my formula text function picks up perfectly whatever type of formula is in the cell, whether it's an array formula, a straight aggregate calculation, a complex calculation, or a simple average. All right, that was a little fun with is formula and formula text, and then a couple other formulas also. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up and leave a comment and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is fun. All right, we'll see you next video.